Hi everyone, welcome back to my next free tutorial Friday. And before we get started this week, just a quick word on this. I'm uh, very excited to tell you that it is now working on the iPad. So, uh, for those of you, the iOS users out there, you can now download it. Just uh, search on the App Store H2DR. Um, and there's a link off of the links page listed on 206. You can get there easily, and there it is. It's a little hard to see with my camera settings, but there's a 3D model on the cover of the book. And all the videos, of course, work, etc. So, uh, very happy to have that now done. And we will be updating the Android app as well. Uh, Rob Baldwin is almost done with that. And uh, we'll get the newest models into that app soon. Okay, so that bit of exciting news over. Okay, so this week's subject is going to be about hard points. And what do I mean by hard points? Well, um, hard points are things when you do a design job um, that cannot move. So let's say your job is mostly styling and a lot of the function has been dictated. So I'm going to, uh, by example, go over this uh, past bicycle project with you to demonstrate what I mean by hard points. Hard points are the things in this design that cannot move. So uh, front axle placement, rear axle placement, bottom bracket, uh, steer tube, through here, right, at that angle and that length, and then uh, seat tube, right, really angle more important, um, and of course you have to have some adjustable length, so this hard point actually extends like this, and uh, derailleur mount, there, for the front derailleur, rear brake mount, and there actually is a limit at how close you can get um, to the pedal, to the foot arc and the foot path. And that's about it for designing the frame. So you start off with those hard points in place. And what I usually do in the case of this, this is a Kestrel design, um, an early sketch for it. And I would do a Xerox copy. And you can see the very lightly there. You can see the wheels and all the, right, the components, handlebars, fork, all that stuff is dictated and it's going to stay put. And really all I get to play with is how to connect those hard points Right? In the case of this design, it's a carbon fiber bicycle frame. So I have freedom with curvature, thickness, taper, um, those sorts of things. I was also investigating making it in multiple pieces. So there are a couple pieces to this design. So this is like a two-piece design with a bonded seam right here. So there's cut lines to think about as well. So when you're constrained, you know, we do things for the entertainment industry. We're not constrained uh, a lot of times. We, uh, it's just sort of, you know, eyeball engineering and rule of thumb, oh yeah, that looks believable, that's good enough. Um, but when you're doing a real product, a lot of times you have hard points so you have to consider. And so then you just have to learn to work within those hard points. So just because you have constraints doesn't mean you can't be creative. What it means is that you have to be creative within the constraints that you've been given. And it's just, um, it's a different problem. Um, being super creative when you have no constraints, and a lot of times, it's going to sound odd, but in a lot of, a lot of ways can be um, more difficult because you have sort of no direction that's been defined of where you can start. In this case, a lot of it's been defined of what you can start with. And so as a result, um, you sort of already can get going. All right, so we'll just I'll look at some variations that I did for that project. Then we'll look at a couple of renderings that are more entertainment related with, uh, you know, magic materials that are unattainable. Um, so you can see the variety here, and I'm not moving the hard points, so I know everything will work, the bicycle will feel the same to ride, the wheelbase will stay the same, where you pedal is the same, where your handlebars remains the same, where you sit is the same, so therefore, any way I want to connect these, okay, can be a design direction. Now, what's important at this part of the stage is not to be afraid of failure, and don't be afraid of just sketching ideas that don't work, it's fine, that's how you arrive and sort of narrow the desired direction. And so a lot of these are going to be maybe not as efficient material usage, um, maybe not as light, maybe not as strong for rear brake mount, but it's worth at the early, early stages when all you have to do is a 10 minute sketch, you know, with a ballpoint pen, it's worth investigating because you might find something, right? And that's usually what our jobs are and what they're all about is finding new and interesting solutions, especially when it comes to styling um, that haven't been thought of before. So a lot of that is just experimentation. So don't worry about 
you know, making mistakes. You have to be, you have to create an environment where failure is okay. And that's, that can be a difficult thing because you put a lot of pressure on yourself. Oh, each sketch has to be beautiful. It has to be the right direction, right? Always have a moving towards a finished goal. And you will be moving towards the finished goal, but it's okay to investigate things you don't use. Um, that's part of the process. So, you know, I think school is a great place where failure, it's a safe place to fail. It gets more difficult in the professional world because um, failure, people start to equate with a lack of skill. And of course, if you do it over and over and over again, then yes, maybe you shouldn't be in that profession. But in the creative process, failure and investigation, just like, you know, research and development is a big part of the process. So obviously this is, you know, too massive in its visual weight. And not only that, the functional weight um, of course, it's got engineering questions. I mean, we can make, you know, Kestrel has the ability to make these amazing open frames. So that's, we solved that problem a long time ago. Um, so, you know, you know, you have to work within the engineering constraints. The hard points can't move. And then you just start to investigate. And you play and you search and you search. And so this would be maybe a one-day process for me to, and then you see the little, the little green marks. What I do is I do a whole bunch of these. I'll say, well, I've got four hours, half a day, and I'm going to sit down and I'll do as many as I can. Hopefully I come up with either I could take the top half of one, you know, the bottom half of another, combine them when I do the next stage. Um, but usually I'll do a whole pile of these, 50 of these, and um, just on top of Xerox copy paper um, with my hard points. And then the green ones are the ones I want to investigate. So I put them all out on the table. Um, if there's not enough room, they all go on the floor. And then I edit. And I go, oh yeah, there's something in there. And I might highlight a little area. And then that means further investigation into the next round. So these are all along those lines. And you can see sketching, oh, this is a concept. Look, let me investigate that for the next one, these arcs that match each other. And so I can't remember what bike this was for. It looks like it's a modular KM40, uh, old bike frame that I designed, but I'm not sure, I can't remember. I did a lot of frames early in my industrial design career um, for Kestrel. Okay, so let's move on to something a bit more fantasy, a bit more entertainment related. These are bicycles that were originally done for, so reading through here a little bit, I'll put it just on the table, um, that I originally did for uh, Minority Report. And they were meant to be uh, sci-fi bicycles in a future where we had uh, interesting material science, we could you know, explore hubless designs, we could use more material because it was lighter and stronger, so obviously it would require some new materials to feel the same way. Um, but they still have hard points, right? I still want it to feel like you're riding a, a bicycle that you already know how to ride. So I wasn't changing the wheelbase much, um, and it wasn't changing the steer tube angle, it wasn't changing the placement of the bottom bracket or the saddle. But you can see, but I'm taking a lot more freedom now in how I connect those hard points. And this is an extreme example, probably the most extreme. And, um, and I didn't like it. I didn't you know, keep going any further. But this is the very, very first sketch. And so hanging the steer tube right from a, a short uh, head tube there, it's just a pivot. Um, and then these bars come up from underneath this top tube, saddles in the same spot, bottom bracket same spot, uh, wheelbase the same. So you can see how dramatically different you can approach right, a bicycle frame to solve connecting the same hard points. So here's something that's a bit more mechanical with some built-in suspension. Um, here's the top. You can, can't see it probably on camera, but there's a little bit of a top view there of the top view of this fork, how it allows the front wheel to turn. Uh, there's a pivot here inside the hub, and there's forks on either side, and then this mechanical linkage here which is suspension, so it has a hinge, it can go up and down, and then you can turn it mechanically and that turns the front wheel. Um, so this is a more modular, again, probably carbon fiber, but all the hard points are in the same spot. And so i just rifle through a couple more of these, and hopefully you're getting the idea that you can be constrained, but you can find creative solutions um, and still meet your engineering requirements. Um, now, of course, when engineering of the frame itself is sort of fantasy and whimsical and a bit ridiculous because um, I'm using so much more material, the load paths are compromised, it's not going to be as strong or as, as efficient. But in the case of 
a sci-fi movie set in the future, we make some assumptions about material science and say, okay, well, what if we could do an efficient hubless rear wheel? Then that'd be fun visually. And maybe it has some power assist because we've got some amazing, you know, electrical um, power assist systems. So this might ride and feel like a really lightweight bike, even though it's quite large. And then making those kinds of assumptions about engineering and material science opens up avenues of exploration for new aesthetics. Um, so that's what all of these are investigating and they don't move the hard points, right? Because I still need it to function. And a lot of the bikes we were trying to build for that show for uh, Minority Report, just as background elements, they needed to be ridden uh, by extras in a scene. And so here we have a, there's an S on there for specialized because we were originally proposing trying to get specialized on board to build the bikes. Um, so I have a couple more and then I'll show you the next step, which is the refinement of these sketches um, in Photoshop. So that, that's, you know, a couple of days work of exploring different designs. And then I pick some directions and then jump into uh, Photoshop. Here, let's look at the traditional kestrel frames which are actually uh, were produced so these are production not this exact design um, but this is an example of doing it this actually was my very first photoshop rendering of a bicycle frame was this series of kestrel frames and um, this would be the sort of thing we propose and then we get together with engineers talk about tube diameters angles right thickness changes that sort of thing so this is a bit more conservative frame but you get the idea that jump in from the sketch, you go directly into Photoshop, and I can do a photoreal rendering uh, in a couple hours, and then everything that's red here is what was made from my imagination, and all the rest is just a photograph. But it works well to communicate the idea. And then here's what happened with some of those other sketches, dropped into Photoshop, um, and explored to a more photoreal level. Um, to see if those are directions that we wanted to try and pursue. And then of course, after this, we would go and backwards engineer it and say, okay, now can we really make it strong enough that somebody can ride in a movie? Um, with these are real wheels from Shimano. And, you know, again, we were pitching to specialize, so I put their logo on it. Um, so that's basically it. You can see that the variety of designs all work with the same hard points. So, I actually, when I'm designing things, I don't mind starting with hard points. I actually think it's a, it makes the puzzle and the challenge all that much more interesting um, because it forces you to be creative within a window or within an envelope. And um, I don't mind that exercise. I actually really, I actually really enjoy that. And oops, I think I got a couple of repeats there. So anyway, that's it. Um, Hope this helps. Uh, was somebody who asked me a question on the uh, on the channel in the comments? I just went to go look. I couldn't find the person's name, so I'm sorry, but thought it was a good question, and um, hope that explains a little bit about working with hard points and working within a window. Um, and again, we talked about it a little bit at the end of last week about um, not you know taking criticism of your work personally. Don't also be afraid to fail. Um, failure is a big part of the creative process. So um, try to find a, you know, don't put so much pressure on yourself that you, you have to try and do every time a beautiful drawing or every time a beautiful design. Let yourself fail, let yourself evolve and refine and um, investigate a design direction so that you can find innovation, uh, both in engineering and problem solving and also styling. So hope that's helpful. Have a great week and uh, have fun. Bye-bye.